What's going on, everybody? Welcome back into the channel. Before we get into anything today, I do want to talk about the giveaway for Twilight of the Republic. Obviously, we are going to do it the same way we always do it on the channel. So when the set comes out the following Tuesday, so November 8th is that Friday when the set comes out. And then on that Tuesday, on the 12th, I'll be opening up a case live on stream. Halfway through, after the first three boxes, I'm going to go ahead away and give away the starter deck along with the game GenX premium tokens. And then at the end of the stream, I'm going to go ahead and give away a box of the new set with a set of the premium tokens. So that's just a little bit different than we normally do. Just adding in the tokens. I felt like uh, people do enjoy the tokens. So I figured I'd throw them into the giveaway and kind of give you guys a little bit more to look forward to. Obviously, you have to stay to the end if you want to try to win the box in that stream. But we have a lot of fun just talking about the new set and all that stuff. So hopefully you guys can make it to that. I know I've been a little bit inconsistent, but there's just been a lot of stuff going on in my life. I am getting married this weekend, so it's going to be a little bit of a delay. And then also I have the, uh, the planetary qualifier the weekend after. But after the qualifier, I'm going to make a video on my experience. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to be more consistent going with the new deck list for the new set. We're going to probably go over some other cards. We still have our tier list, me and Matt, kind of going over some of the new cards, our favorite cards. There are a ton of new fun cards in the set. And we're going to kind of give our thoughts about that. In this video, I'm going to go ahead and talk about some of the old cards that I do think that have a chance to really make an impact in this next upcoming set. Obviously, there are some obvious ones. And I'll kind of mention, hey, this is an obvious one, right? So I'll start off probably with the obvious ones first. And then kind of go from there. Because I think that there are some sneaky ones that could be really good. I'll talk about the combo. But without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about some of these set one and two cards that you might see get an increase in play and here's one of the obvious ones right you have count dooku he's a four separatist sith obviously he might go pretty well in the count dooku deck if you want to go ahead and make count dooku blue you can go ahead and swing with count dooku give this exploit three and then essentially it's a one drop if you do uh sacrifice off three units if they have the tokens on the board this is gonna be a one drop it's removal comes in shielded so i do think that this is going to see some play in some villainy decks that want to use that exploit uh, mechanic and stuff like that especially if it's yeah, obviously blue villainy but that's one of the obvious ones there's nothing too too crazy i think that this card has a really good place and that is it binds all things uh the reason i think that it binds all things is something that you can kind of see especially in blue decks is because it is a form of removal for two costs the card allows you to heal three to up to three damage from a unit and if you control a force unit it becomes removal so if you control that force unit, it allows you to deal that damage that you have healed back to an opponent's unit, which I think provides that flexibility. If you want to run a deck that has healing for your units, this is the card to do it if you are running a big amount of force units or an amount of force units that you feel like this could end up being both. Because having something that heals your units and deals damage back to your opponent's units is really strong especially if you are healing up sentinels to potentially protect your base even longer i think this is a really cool card especially in a deck like obi-wan because he is a sentinel himself and if you are using it to heal himself or even when he's on the board and heal up another one of your units because he's on the board and is a force unit he's dealing back that three damage and then you can also use his other ability to heal a, a damage off of one of your units and fling it back to your opponents as well i just think it's a really good synergy piece right there and i think it's a lot of fun and i think that uh you can see a decent amount of play with this card now people might be saying oh this is kind of an obvious one but it's general krell right general krell and if you're playing a double green count dooku build and i think that that's a set uh, like a deck that i want to kind of try out right if you have general krell on the board now yes you cannot use count dooku's ability to get exploit and get this onto the board but if this is on the board at any point when you're using Count Dooku's ability to exploit and stuff like that, everything that you use for exploit will be able to draw a card. So then if you have this out and then you go ahead and you swing at Count Dooku and you give something your next turn exploit three, you go ahead and you sacrifice off those three cards and the General Krell's on the board. You go ahead and you draw three cards. And people were kind of saying how it's a little bit worrisome that Count Dooku is using a lot of cards in his hand really fast this might be the way around that because you can go ahead and again exploit three get rid of some of the cards and then you're refilling up your hand by just playing one card and i think that, that has some potential the only problem is that this is a five four with that four uh hp it 
is kind of easy to remove from the board for the most part. But if you can find a way to get this to stick and then go ahead and you play out something for exploit and then get the draw up your hand it's just i think it's just a good combination for potential i don't think it's going to be like you know meta defining or anything like that i just think that has a good synergy kind of play with count dooku in the fact that he does allow you to draw you also um in any exploit deck in general if you are playing a double green exploit deck i just think that it works really well with count Dooku because it's just part of his ability to give anything with separatist exploit so Again, a good way to replenish your hand. And then in double green, you can run things like man and stuff like that and kind of, you know, get your ramp, make things stronger, right? If you play command on general crowd, you can go ahead and give it two experience tokens while also getting maybe some ramp or be able to fire out that seven damage from crowd onto something in double green with command. So it's just, you know, a pretty decent combination. The deck that really makes me think that this is going to be decent is in a deck like Darth Maul, like Maul leader, where he's giving everything overwhelm, I think Frontline Shuttle could see some play. And the reason being is that you are most likely attacking into your opponent's units in that type of deck anyway, because everything has overwhelm when when Maul's on the board, right? So if Maul's on the board, you get overwhelm, and then you can go ahead and defeat the Frontline Shuttle to have it attack again into something. So if you have something that has Overwhelm, attack into something, and it lives, and your opponent doesn't go ahead and take it out on the following swing, you can go ahead and you can defeat your own Frontline Shuttle and then have it attack into something else on the board. And obviously with it having Overwhelm, it can really do some work there. So I think that that, again, not going to be crazy meta-defining, but I do think that it has potential to really catch people off guard in a way another card i was kind of thinking that could be fun again not like crazy meta defining but i think that you can have some fun if you are a player that likes to play double blue because i know that a lot of people think that double blue is a lot of fun to play that's kind of their style a more control way of playing i think bendu in a double blue deck could be really good especially with the cards that are coming out there are a ton of non-heroic and non-villainy cards coming out like Kiade Moon Day and stuff like that that can work really well with this right so if you go ahead and you attack with Bendu it makes Kiade Moon Day cost three it also makes Vigilance cost two uh which will allow you to play Vigilance for two and then potentially play a bigger card because obviously Bendu coming out on six when you are able to attack with him you're gonna have seven resources so then you can go ahead and you can swing with Bendu play Vigilance and then maybe play Kiade Moon Day on top of that so you get the like a full value turn in that there are a ton of just non heroism and non villainy cards that obviously with the next few sets coming out uh with set two and set two one you can really make a double blue non-heroic type of thing potentially work really well and i think that that being able to see bendu potentially come out here and do some work uh i'd be really happy i really do like bendu but again it might be a little bit too slow, but in a double blue deck, you're not trying to go fast anyway. So I think that that has some potential because a lot of the cards that you are running in the deck, like Fell the Dragon, uh, Take Down, all those cards, they are not heroism and villainy cards anyway, if you're playing more of a control style play anyway. So I think that that has some potential, especially with the new cards coming out in the third set in Twilight of the Republic. I think that Bendu, you could really see, really get some value obviously double blue you would have to be playing double blue to get this to work really because i don't think playing bendu for eight would be ideal but you know i do think that a double blue deck if you are a player that likes double blue you know try it out i think that it could be a lot of fun another card from set one that i think has some potential to maybe do a little bit more than it has in the past is precision fire now i do not think precision fire is a bad card at all it doesn't really see a lot of play because there are better choices rather than using precision fire because you're not using for the most part a full trooper deck but with the emergence of uh captain rex leader where his deck is really just about troopers i think that if you play a captain rex red deck because there are a ton of clone trooper units in set three that fall into aggression that can make Captain Rex really work really well, kind of get that speed, deal some damage, kind of hit the board with like, you know, heavy 
taking all the tokens when he's defeated. Maybe even just Jesse being able to swing big, yet you're giving your opponent a couple of battle droid tokens, but you are swinging for five for the cost of three. So like those are some really big units. Uh, but then you go ahead and you add in precision fire. Again, if you have a full deck of troopers, this allows you to get saboteur so you don't have to get stopped by sentinels, which is really nice. Or if there's a unit with a shield that you need to really get rid of, you can go ahead and play this, get saboteur on one of your troopers. And because again, majority of that deck will probably be troopers with how Captain Rex is like, his leader is and a lot of the clone troopers are troopers you'll get plus two plus zero so it's a one cost and then you're getting a boost to hit the base harder to get around sentinel or to just take out a shielded unit i think that this card is going to see a lot of play in rex i think maybe even if it's just a two of cool but i do think that the potential is there to that where this card is going to see a little bit more play in the next set another card that i want to talk about is bombing run now bombing run simply for the fact that tokens are a thing and i think the flexibility of being able to play bombing run and deal three damage to everything in a certain zone allows you to have that flexibility to where if they are just playing a bunch of tokens on the ground cool you can go ahead and get rid of everyone's tokens even if it's your own still if they have more tokens than you this might be a card that you want to run maybe even just in the sideboard just so you don't get token spammed and not have an answer for it but also it allows you to hit space and if you don't have big space answers and stuff like that, it allows you to go ahead and deal three damage to some space units, maybe get rid of them. If they're playing maybe an aggressive style with some small HP amount of space units that can keep on hitting your base and stuff like that, right? But also with a leader like Mace Windu that requires the units to be damaged, this allows you to hit an entire area and deal some damage to them. So if you're going ahead and you're hitting space for three across the board, and they have three space units, but they all live, you then go ahead and deploy Mace Windu if you have seven resources, and you're dealing a total of five damage to everything in that zone, which is really nice. Also, if you have some more damage units on the other side, you can go ahead and deal more damage there. Also, Mace Windu's ability prior to having him come out allows you to hit something, and if they have five more damage, you can hit it again. So you can potentially get rid of big space threats with this combination because you can go ahead use bomb and run deal three uh go ahead you know use mace windu's ability get down to that fourth you're not gonna be able to hit it again but you get a fourth damage and you go ahead and you bring out mace windu and it'll deal a total of six damage to something in space and then deal two damage to everything else in space that's pretty good value right there it's a really decent way to also again deal with tokens if people are using token spam against you we don't know how good that's going to be or how reliable that's going to be but I have to imagine that at some point you're going to be going up against a bunch of tokens and you're not going to have an answer for them. So bombing run, even in your sideboard, could be a potential answer for that if you are playing aggression. Another card that we might see an increase in play. And again, it's another card that has to do with tokens. And I think that this is kind of an obvious one. I'm not going to talk about how, you know, this is like, could be a surprise increase in play. No, but it's Snoke, Supreme Leader Snoke, just with the fact that him being on board, it makes it so your opponent cannot play tokens right so battle droid tokens would not be able to be played because they'll get minus two minus two on entry dead clone tr uh, trooper tokens same thing minus two minus minus two on entry dead so i do think that this is a card obviously not a crazy out of the water pick right it's just again it's just a potential that this is going to be seeing a lot more play and again in villainy control it's already seeing play so it's not like it's going to be like a crazy surprise if it's seeing more play in the next set right again not a surprising one but it's still i do feel like it's going to see some play that's mystic reflection now mystic reflection now mystic reflection is a one drop that gives an enemy uh unit minus two minus zero for the phase but if you control a force unit give that enemy unit minus two minus two that is obviously going to see some play now you have make an opening that is a three cost that gives something minus two minus two and you heal but this being a one drop and giving something minus two minus two it makes it so uh your tie phantoms aren't like running around like crazy it kind of you know gives you that option to just play this for one and still get some more plays in you don't have to give as many resources to take out something like that but then also like just again you're playing blue this is a heroism card so you're not going to be able to play it as good in in villainy right but Again, you're going to control more force units in this next set. And if you are running a heavy Sentinel deck, I do think that Obi-Wan deck is going to really like Mystic Reflection because I'm going to be playing Obi-Wan. And that's really what I've been looking into is really just seeing what cards have some good synergy with Obi-Wan. And I think this card obviously has a really good chance to make it in a lot of the Obi-Wan decks or just a lot of blue Heroes and Force 
decks because obviously you can go ahead and run Ahsoka with blue and make it a force centric deck and you do the same thing with any color in heroes and with this right but with that being said i do think mystic reflection obviously not an off the board choice i just think it's going to be really good in the next set you don't have to spend three like you do for make an opening and you've kind of seen make an opening kind of see a dip in play and i think mystic reflection is going to see some good play because there are a lot more force units in this set another card that people might choose to run because of tokens is choose size now choose size is a pretty expensive card to play costing seven but allows you to switch one of your units on your side with an opponent's unit now if you are a token centric deck and you want to go ahead and trade your token for an actual unit that has more value on the other side i think that's where this might come into play maybe in a deck that's a little bit slower uh like palpatine and stuff like that this might see play because it, you're going to potentially steal a really big threat that your opponent has and then you're going to give them you're just going to go ahead and give them a unit that you have that is just not a threat so like i think that in a slower green deck this could actually see some play now because again trading a token for an actual unit could be pretty good that cost at seven might be a little bit scary but i still think that this has some potential Another card I want to talk about, this is right before the final two. I, the last two I want to talk about is just kind of a little bit of a combo, right? But this card right here, Palpatine's Return, I think that, again, with the increase in the amount of force units you see in something like um, Count Dooku, especially, because you can go ahead and you can use exploit on your force units to go ahead and summon other things or play other units, bigger force units, and you can go ahead and play this to bring back some force units back onto the field right so i think that palpatine's return because of the increase in force units you're going to see an increase in play in this card though not a crazy spicy pick i just think that the synergy especially with count dooku a lot of these older cards that have force synergy and stuff like that i do think that palpatine's return is going to see a little bit more play because again in a villainy deck you can have snoke you can have asajj ventress darth maul uh, unit really good to bring back you can get Keade Munde Kit Fisto because again they are not villainy are they not heroism cards so you might see them in villainy decks because they are pretty solid and other cards like that right obviously the final card I want to talk about and it's a couple of cards right it's kind of they're in tandem and that's just because and I'll go over the reason why but I do think that one is obviously going to be better than the other I think that Ray and Kylo Ren are going to see an increase in play and maybe maybe i'm not going to see an increase in play but i do think the potential is there right so when you're talking about ray ray has the ability to heal a unit uh for two right that's pretty good it works really well on attack heal uh damage from a unit heal two damage from a unit pretty good and if it's a non-heroism unit it gets a shield and i think that that works really well with again obi-wan if he's running a sentinel style deck or just a bunch of like non-heroism cards in double blue and stuff like that you can go ahead and you can give your unit shield while also healing with ray healing with obi-wan and you can go ahead and you can keep things on the board a lot longer and i think that that's a really cool combination right depending on what color you're playing you can go ahead and you can heal up kiade munde he's a five seven for five you can heal him and give him a shield keep him on the board a little bit longer that's pretty solid if you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna play green right there's options in green that you can go ahead and you can heal up just like commander cody one that comes to mind uh in uh aggro right if you want to go aggression with obi-wan and you want to run this type of deck there are a ton of options with that right things like heavy kit fisto uh just anything that doesn't have heroism that you might be running in a deck like that so like i do think that it has some potential uh but i do think that kylo ren has more potential to make it really pop off because of the fact that you can play it in a deck like maul and these things have overwhelm and you can have kylo ren you can swing and give something experience tokens is really big because again kit fisto it has saboteur as well i think that the combination of kit fisto and kylo ren could be really strong in the late game right because you go ahead you swing a kylo ren you give kit fisto two uh experience tokens and then he becomes a problem right and he's a nine eight he has saboteur coordinate if you have coordinate online you attack you deal three damage to a ground unit it gets into a really big cycle there you can go ahead and play it onto heavy 
you can give heavy some experience tokens because he is just just aggression um and there's just again a ton of options depending on what colors you are playing with maul but you know the the increase in the amount of i think non-heroism and non-villainy cards that might be seeing play in a lot of these decks i think it's going to increase because i know that in rebel aggression decks you had a lot of things in the same uh, in heroism because obviously for a cause i believe in you kind of wanted to rock that way and get some extra damage but you might not need that now so i think that the increase of non-heroism non-villainy cards might lead and give more room for maybe Ray and Kylo Ren to shine a little bit more. Now, Kylo Ren has seen some play, and I do think that Ray has seen some play, but nothing too crazy. And I think that the potential is there to see an increase in both of these cards just because of the increase in non villainy and non heroism units that might be played in decks. But that's just going to do it for us, right? We talked about a, a number of cards that I do think that has potential. I think that some of them are a lot more obvious than others and i you know i'm happy to see i'm excited to see where this kind of goes and what kind of pops off i hope that you know some of these kind of work out i do think the frontline shuttle one is just kind of you know hoping for the best i think that, that has some fun little cheeky scenarios that it can really pop off in but again it's not going to be a staple it's not going to be like an every game type of thing it's just like a kind of yeah hey if it's there it's there but with that being said, again, I want to apologize for the little bit of inconsistency. I've been getting ready for a wedding. I'm getting married this weekend. Uh, and then I have the planetary qualifier the following weekend. But after the planetary qualifier, we're going to be more consistent. We're going to do that giveaway in a, uh, about a month, right? So get excited for that. You guys know that we have a ton of fun uh, during giveaway streams. And yeah, we're going to be more consistent after the fact because I'm not going to be crazy, crazy busy. We're going to, you know, get back on the grind and give back to you guys as much as I can. Again. If you are new here, if you're enjoying the content, make sure you hit that sub button. Support is always appreciated. And until next time, I want to say thank you. I'll see you guys next time.